All right, guys, just uploaded my revision 10 from my e-tuner. Just setting up my Honda right now. Got the phone here, gonna connect. Tonight, this is it pretty much. This is the final stage of the tuning process. Got my revision 10 and I know it's dark out, but I'm not gonna have time to film tomorrow, so I wanna get this done tonight. Eight ten right now or so. Do some late night pulls with the last revision of the tune, just so you guys can see how quick it is and what to expect when you decide to go with like an e-tune. It's crazy that this whole tune process is pretty much done right now. I just remember when I got pretty much my revision number one, it just seemed like it was yesterday. It's been a pretty long process as I've stated in other videos. It's been really cool, you know, my, I like my tuner and everything. You know, I've learned a few new things, whether it's ejector, pulse width, pretty much how an oxygen sensor, especially an air fuel sensor, can screw up your tune completely in 100%. So that was pretty interesting. I've definitely, you know, took notes for the future when I have to do the whole tuning process again. So I'm, I'm kind of like getting more experience and stuff like that. Honestly, I mean, the tune feels good. You know, everything feels good for the most part. The mid-range has picked up a lot of decent power from like anywhere from like 43 to about, you know, six grand. That feels a lot stronger than it was. But my only complaint about this was like, you know, the weight between the tunes, like sending the e-tunes and waiting for the files and waiting for your e-tuner or him waiting for you and just kind of finding the time to you know, communicate back and forth was kind of tough. I mean, obviously we have all have cell phones nowadays, but people are busy and, you know, there were some days where I had to go a certain amount of days waiting for the tune, so it was kind of irritating. It was really, it was a fun experience. You know, I liked every minute of it for the most part, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Like, I should have listened to most of you guys. I should have went Dino Tune. Only other negative thing I really have to say about this E-Tune experience, I'm gonna be honest with you guys here, you know, and there's no shade being thrown or anything in my tuner. I feel like my top end guys, like there is just no top end at all like I feel like the car fall it's like the opposite as it was stocks instead of being sluggish 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 and then finally getting power well this is like power and then up to like 80 or 90 then it's just slower increments so I don't know if my wide open throttle is a hundred percent like fully adjusted but according to my tuner he said everything was good for right now i don't know if it's the exact tune i'm compensating you know that cross that aggressive stock cross over at 5800 for a better mid-range where I'm, I'm moving the transition to 4300 rpms instead of having both cams engage and both in the vtc engage at 5800 so i know i'm not getting that jolt that kick for the top end but i kind of missed that and i wish this was a little bit stronger if you want my honest opinion i had to do this over again and like i said i'm still learning stuff and a lot of you guys have done this stuff i would have rather spent the money for a dyno tune because less of a wait time i'm gonna be there you know physically seeing what they're doing to my car so you know if i had to do this whole experience over again and if i have to do this tuning again in the future which i'm planning on it i'm most likely going to find a you know really good reputable dyno tuner so i think that'll be more beneficial for the car McDonald's, your boys gotta get some food real quick. Grab some fries real quick. Mmm, been forever since I had these guys. I forgot to mention, not only is the tune extremely healthy, guys, but there's zero knocks whatsoever. So that's why I'm running it right now. 10 revisions it took me. Would have probably taken me less, and I probably would have made a lot more power if I didn't screw up my O2 sensor 
quicker process if I had replaced my O2 sensor from the start and not had waited to like midway through tuning. So that kind of like messed me up, guys, with the whole O2 sensor thing. My air fuel wasn't right, whatever. So I had to wait for the revisions pretty much. I had to technically get a retune for like two revisions or three revisions because my O2 sensor crapped out. So it took me 10 revisions total for the whole e-tuning process if you guys wanted to know. Tune runs pretty strong as you guys saw. I mean, I can even lie to you guys, I switched back to stock just to see the differences between. Feel like the stock, my car stock with like the top end would keep up with this. And I also was messing around with Billy and we raced for fun. And all he has is an in-gen short ram intake with like a short shifter. And we raced in top end, he was literally like, we were side by side and he started pulling on me a little bit at top end. So I feel like you can't really touch the stock SI Z3 top end power. It's just pretty wild. Still like my tuner, no shade to him at all. You know, good customer service, you know, somewhat quick with replying. He's detailed, he lets you know exactly what he's doing to your car. But I mean, there are some negative things. So my overall experience, guys, I would probably rate it from one being the lowest to 10 being the highest on like happiness and satisfaction. I would probably rank my experience with E-Tunes like an eight for this whole experience. I was just going to back out and I started my car and all of a sudden, I get this little light down there on and I literally have no power steering. My power steering gave out. I can't even turn the wheel. It is extremely stiff. Look at this. I can't even turn this. Look at I can't I can't even turn my power steering, dude. I just shut the car off and I turned it back on and now I have power steering again. So I'm literally so sketched out right now. I don't even want to go do any more pulls. So, wow, I really hope it's not the steering rack. I mean, so drop your comments down below if you have ever had any issue with that. I swear that light came on before and I didn't have power steering, but it went off. So let me know if you guys ever had that symbol, even though this is super sketchy because that, that power steering light came on, still gonna try to perform a couple pulls for you guys. Tune comparison and e-tune comparison uh, compared to a stock ECU. So I'm gonna reset my ECU back to stock after I perform an e-tune pull. We're gonna do a third gear pull and see which one seems like it's quicker. guys got the think pad out right now as you can see and i'm currently going to flash my ecu back to stock to see the difference between the stock ecu and the tuned ecu so we're going to go here to online and then we're going to go to return ecu to stock yes Back to stock. Uh-oh, and I lost my power steering. You got to be kidding me, right? Wow, man, I really think my rack is bad, guys. To put it in reverse or something? What the heck, it went away. No, you guys just saw that, man. That is so freaking weird. Not physically timing these these acceleration laps i'm not doing anything like that it's more of kind of like a top end test if you want to be precise i'm not saying that a stock si is faster than a tuned si obviously um just stating the difference when what feels better oh my god that rev hang is kind of ridiculous Curb is out here, man. We gotta work off the pouch. 
It's been years, maybe months, since the last time I've been in one of these places. <laughs> I'm already dying out. Almost first five minutes, but it's all right. We gotta get the weight loss on, you know? All right, guys, just picking up Project Midnight right here. I had to leave this thing at the commuter lot last night. I was super sketched out about it, but I thought they were talking snow. Ended up just raining, and my girl has like no spots at her house to park, so I'm out here with a TT Quattro and a Ford Focus. This is the better car, though. Pretty much the SI is going to need a ton of work soon coming up, guys. I'm going to need a timing chain. I'm going to need a tensioner, possibly a VTC gear. Every time I start this thing up, it's make a rattling noise inside the motor. So what I'm going to do is when I get the chance this week, bring it over to my grandfather's shop. Josh and I are going to take a look at it, pop the valve cover, check the tension on the chain, and I'm just going to change the oil, pretty much run it for a while. Maybe once I do a rebuild, um, then I could decide if I want to pick up the K24 now or just build the K20 in the meantime. So I got a few things I'm tossing around right now. In terms of what's next, I know a lot of you guys want to see like do-it-yourself videos, like maintenance videos. So expect to see more of those. Like I stated, I think I have a rear bearing making noise, so I might have to do like wheel bearings. I need brakes, obviously. I still got to order the rotors, and and then I have to worry about the timing issues. So I'm gonna just take time. And, you know save some more money I still want to do suspension mods I have one coming soon actually I'm gonna order it sometime next week so I have a suspension mod coming that's gonna be pretty dope beneficial and I've been looking at like a set of coilovers that two or three people recommended no they're not true hearts they're not TN they're not BC racing you'll see if I do get those so I'm probably gonna have my HFP suspension for sale so yeah expect to see maybe some like race videos I don't have any check engine lights right now obviously you saw that light that came on last night with the power steering issue that was super super freaking weird guys so I don't know what the hell is going on with that if I might need a steering rack eventually but i really hope i don't i think it'd be cool to have a chain video like a tensioner and a timing chain with a guide video for you guys so i think that'd be really beneficial whether i do it in the car which is probably going to be a nightmare or i get the chance and the time to pull the motors i'm going to try to do the tensioner job first i think that's the plan so i'm going to be doing a timing chain inspection coming up soon that might be my next video so stay tuned for that i think that's going to be pretty cool for you guys and i already have the tensioner well if there's anything you guys want to see drop your comments down below we're almost at 10,000 subscribers which is absolutely crazy i'm probably going to do like a mean burnout and i've been looking at stuff to potentially do another giveaway so stay tuned for the 10k couple car interviews and reviews that i'm going to be doing i have a tsx that I'm gonna be reviewing soon. And then Honda Day's right around the corner, getting ready for that. And I'm also gonna be planning a trip to South Carolina and North Carolina. So stay tuned for that. That's probably gonna be in like another, maybe a month or two. So that's gonna be sweet, guys. I love the Carolinas. Drop your comments down below. Don't forget to hit the like button. And if you wanna stay up to date with my recent videos, press the notification bell when you subscribe to the channel. So. I'll see you guys in the next video. Subscribe for more Honda content. Peace out.